Good morning, guys, and welcome to Unique Not Different with me, Shamla. And today I have, and I've been um, waiting a long while to have this team. It's the Blind Cricket team of Trinidad and Tobago. And with me, I have Daryl Joseph, who is the president of the Blind Cricket team. I have Jensen Poyer, who is a member. And I have Omar Harinanan, who is the assistant secretary for the Blind Cricket team. So we today we are going to talk about blind cricket team and also have a short demonstration on how this works because being blind and then cricket, you know, obviously you have to see to do things, but they're going to prove us wrong. So good morning, Daryl. How are you doing? Hi, good morning, Shamla. I'm fine. Um, so it's a pleasure to have you. And we've been trying to do this since prior to COVID, right? And it's actually happening. So can you tell us a little bit about, you know, the genesis behind the blind cricket team and what, you know, how it all got started and when it got started? Okay. Yes, well, um, blind cricket was launched in the Caribbean in the year 2005. I myself, I became a member in about 2011. And since that, yeah, we carried on because we have teams from throughout the Caribbean, such as Guyana, Barbados, Jamaica, doing what I learned, the what I learned, you know. So everybody came together and the cricket was there was launched in 2005, like I said, and we usually keep tournaments every year. However, the last tournament was in 2018, which however we was not a part of due to logistical reasons. But since then, we have been right now the whole Caribbean is in the process of rebuilding. Blind cricket since after COVID. So you talk about you know tournament, right? So what type of tournament do you yeah, do, does your team and you know get involved in? Well, Regional usually, tournament, local. Yeah, it's um it's local, regional, and also international because when you usually have the regional tournaments based on performance, um, the usually uh West Indies team is selected whereby we go internationally to play the World Cup. The World Cups are held with 20. Next one is scheduled for 2024 in Pakistan. So later this year, we are supposed to have a tournament in the Caribbean whereby a team will be selected. And hopefully once everything goes according to plan, we'll have a team to represent the Caribbean in 2014. Not 2014, sorry, 2024. Oh, wow. Okay, so in terms of like, you know, support and stuff like that, sponsorship, support, you know, what type of um support do you guys get in order to, you know, obviously for it, there is a cost and even in the national cricket team, you know, there are sponsors that help support. So what type of support and, you know, publicity do you guys have, you know, in getting uh, to this tournament and prepared? Well, usually we rely on funding from the Ministry of Sports and Community Development, as well as the assistance from corporate sponsors and donations from the public. And also we do a little fundraising of our own from time to time. However, this has proved to be a bit challenging since after COVID. So right now, as I said before, we are still in the process of doing that. Okay, so how persons can reach out to the Blind Cricket team to, you know, show support in whether it's, you know, just support, joining the team, you know, financially, how persons can reach out to the team? Well, if members of the public would like to assist the team, you could reach, reach out to myself at 351-5088 or the secretary at 351-7620, as well as we have our association email account, which is ttbvic. And the word association. So it should be T T B V I C A S S O C I A T I O N at gmail.com. Uh -huh. And we also have a Facebook page as well, where you can go by go up and see some videos and pictures and stuff about the team. And that Facebook page is Trinidad and Tobago Blind and Visually Impaired Cricket Association. You have to spell out all the words. Okay, no problem. And so now we have the, you know, we, we are going to have a live demo on how it works. And during this demo, maybe we can, you know, have a quick chat in terms of like membership and 
and all the type of members there is and there are in the team. So um, we have. If you wish, I could um, I could give a little breakdown before the demonstration. Okay, yeah, can I, you give it, give it quick? Yeah, what happened? The, the game is usually broken up into three categories of players: the B ones, B twos, uh -huh. and B threes. The B ones right. wear a white wristband on their right arm usually. The B twos right. wear a red wristband, and the B threes wear a blue wristband. So based on the color, determine the vision of the player. Whereby the B three will those have the be those that have the most vision. And yeah. the ones with those have the least or no vision at all. Very good. And and um, is there anything else quick you want to say? No, that's that's it for now. Okay, perfect. And I have Natasha who who was kind enough to um help in the demonstration. I'm unable to see studio in studio right now, but Natasha, can you um take over please? That's yes, I am seeing you, so we can do this together. <laughs> Wonderful. So in studio, Shamla, we have Omar and Janison. Good morning. How are Good you guys morning, going morning. today? Fine, thank you. It's wonderful to have you on the show. So let's get straight into this demonstration. Hey, no the problem. whole studio is yours and let me know if you need help. I'm here. Okay. All right, Omar, you yeah, stand Omar. there? Yeah. Right. So I would just say basically the difference between black cricket and conventional cricket mm -hmm. is you have to have an extra level of care. So you don't just put a ball behind a blind person. That's a problem. Right. But you would then do, you would have to do a call and answer. So the bowler would call to the batsman to see if he is ready, and the batsman would announce either yes or no. Ah. Along with this, you don't throw the ball as it, I mean, you can't throw a ball at a blind person. That's. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, blind cricket is underarm. Okay. Right. So basically, what we do there, the, the pitch, half of the pitch, the ball must stop half, half of the pitch there. Right, so basically it's, it's a motion like this here. Ah. Ah, but no. if they like, pretend like we ought to not feel that was a six, but <laughs> but yeah, that's basically right. it. But so, usually he was yeah? the call. Yeah, the bowling right. is on the arm. Okay. Right. But it must roll on the ground. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but uh, you see half of the pitch? It yes. must stop before half of the pitch, right? So this speed why bowling out here, right? Mm -hmm. This is demonstration, but in competition, in regional tournament and things, so the ball does come much, much faster. So okay. this is just a basic bowling out here. And we can hear the ball as well. Yeah, because the ball Wait. has to have some kind of sound. So right. as he some said, beads. persons who are either totally blind or persons like me who have mm -hmm. partial blindness and then persons who have even, well, still visually impaired, but not 20-20 vision is, I would say blind cricket is one of the games where it has equal footing mm -hmm. because anybody could play and everyone is given an equal chance. And then you would ask, how is it fair for those who are totally blind? When it comes to running, any runs made by a totally blind person is doubled. Okay. So if a, blind, a totally blind person hits a six, which is a B1, so if a B1 hits a six, okay. he will get 12 runs instead of the six. And that helps to even out because obviously it's an extra level of difficulty mm -hmm. playing when you cannot see something coming at you. Wow, this is incredible. So uh, what, it's definitely uh, a difference to training. Shamla? Yes, and what about feeling in terms of feeling when the ball goes and you, you bat the ball, right? Is it, you just mentioned that, you know, there's an equal footing per se in terms of the different spheres of blindness, right? So is it that, um, Persons who are totally blind, as a person, as opposed to somebody who is visually impaired, how do they go after the ball? Is it by the song only? In terms of playing style, um, all players on the field, B1, B2, and B3, will bat, bowl, and field. The only thing a B1 wouldn't do is either run between the wickets or wicket keep. Oh. In terms of fielding, the ball, sometimes the ball would either be on the ground so you could hear it coming, or sometimes someone might hit it in the air and you'll hear it passing by. Um, if it comes close to B1, they are able to hear it and would be able to get it. But it is the, it's a very collaborative effort because the B3s are those with the best vision. And even if they are halfway across the field, they would have to shout to the B1 and tell them it by your left foot, it behind you, it go left, go right. So it's like assistance mm -hmm. and it have a lot of calling because if a B1 is far from the bowler, obviously, and somebody is running between the wickets, how would you get the blind person to get the ball to the bowler in order to out them? The person who has the ball now would then have to call out to the, either the keeper or the bowler 
and then they would have to answer. So then the B1 would know where to throw the ball. This is interesting. There's a lot of communication in this, that's for sure. Yes. So, um, Jansen, tell us a little bit about bowling in particular. You mentioned that it's underarm. Right, bowling is underarm and it must, the ball must come before the half of the pitch. Anytime the ball goes over the pitch, it's it considered as a, as a no ball, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the bowling there towards a B1 there, they will have their runner at the side by them there, right? So when the B1 hits the ball there now, the runner communicates with the other runner and they run. Now, with the bowling style and with the B1's bowling there now, it does be an extra challenge because the B1's totally blinded. They will have to hold the wicket now as a guide. And the wicket keeper now will be behind there so keep a keep a, as a song they like as a direction where mm -hmm. the ball, the bowler should bowl. I'm so sorry, but we have to cut you. Shamla, it's over to you. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I know we are out of time, but team, this is really incredible. And I really um would like to say, you know, please support the um definitely. This um opened my eyes and I did not know there was a blind cricket team until someone approached me and told me this some years ago. So thank you so much. And these guys, again, support. And we may, you know, we can have you back to do maybe a more in-depth presentation to see how it works in real and have more members outside. So thank you so much. And until next week, guys, be good. Do good. Bye, everyone.